Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Pert. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning, to First Contact Radio. Welcome to the First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things we're talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's First Contact with Joshua Poet. He's a man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe, from the weather and space to UFOs. He'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. He'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. Radio. We it's have time to demand the truth. truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. Radio. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Made it to Friday, the end of the week. It's uh, pouring out here in Southern California, but we definitely could use the rain, so it's a good thing. Let's get on with our information for today. Let me set this up properly. There we go. All right, today is 28th. We've made it to the end of the second month, so we're just moving along here. March begins tomorrow. Springtime is only a few weeks away. How about that? So today we could see here that there's a transition going on with the moon sign. It's going from Aquarius to Pisces. And that transition completes itself before this show is over, 8.52 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So we're in the middle of this transition now. So we're going from air, which is the air of Aquarius, to the water of Pisces. Pisces is emotion. Remember, water is emotions, love, things that flow. We're certainly getting plenty of uh, Pisces all around here with all this water coming down upon us. Um, but what we've got, remember the words and actions and then love and emotion. So we're going to be dealing with for the course of today and tomorrow and a little bit the next day, the double Pisces, Pisces sun, Pisces moon, which is a lot of emotion. So over the course of this weekend, expect that there will be a lot of emotional energy around and your objective is simply to try not to get caught up and drowned in all of the water. The best way to do that is to make sure that that water, that emo, is all love. You know, put love into the world. Can't drown in the love, right? So, try not to get caught up in all of the emotions that are about. Now, we could see here later that uh, tonight there is a nice aspect between our sun sign, which is Pisces, and Jupiter, which is an expansion. So, there's some positive thing going on there. So, there's an expansiveness of this water expansiveness of the Piscean idea now one of the things with Pisces it implies with the tarot cards it implies the idea of faith okay it implies the idea of faith because it relates to the tarot card of the moon which is all about walking out into the world and going into the world where you walk into the unknown in order to experience something different and as you go into the unknown and experience something different, well, a lot comes from that. You know when things are different, we have different feelings, different emotions, and all kind of things come up because of that. And so we just learn how to adapt to the various situations. Okay, so nice expansiveness of energy later tonight. Now, numerology, we're at a one-tone day. How did we get it a one-tone day? This way here. We've got February, which is 2. We've got February, which is 2. We have the 28th. So we have 2 plus 2 plus 8 equals 12. So 1 plus 2. And then the 7 for the year, 2, 0, 1, 4. So all together, we've got the 7 plus the 2 plus the 1. That's a 10. And the 1 plus the 0 of the 10 equals 1. And the reason we're doing this, this is all called theosophic subtraction. It's where you subtract down to the lowest number. So the number 1, right here, 
the card of the magician also the sign of mercury or the astrological sign of the planet of mercury deals with communication so today is a day about communication so let's remember this card here what we have is a character a male representing the conscious mind who is holding one hand up and one hand down signifying that that which is above is that which is as below there's the sign of infinity above this head saying that life is reciprocal energy continues on into infinity and as we learn to channel the higher thoughts down into the physical world we're able to manifest the things that we want the flowers represent the things that are growing through the manifestations of focus but the conscious mind is required to focus the energy to be able to create it and you can see here on the table we have all the elements fire water air earth wand sword cup pentacle so the magician has all the tools available to be able to create anything we have to use our minds to focus and the one secret behind the magician is the magician needs to learn to work with the energies remember we're co-creators so as energy flows through the objective is to learn how to work with that energy in a co-creative way know when it is time to really put out the energy and know it's time to step back and allow the energy to be able to do its thing we can't just keep pushing 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 we have to allow this intelligent energy to be able to move once it is taken its um its action point so now we could see here that one's individualistic independent showing leadership and drive masculine focused and originator self-starter but the flip side stubborn self weak undisciplined and so on okay so today is a focus day and uh so we want to focus and then if we combine that with the idea of all of these emotions and things in the world kind of tells us let's really focus on what we're doing as we're dealing with this world of emotions as we're dealing with all of the water around us focus on what it is we're wanting to do and we have a much better way of doing it now let's go over and look here it says um it says have you ever seen the canopus the second brightest star after sirius and one of the many interesting coincidences that devoted sky watchers know about Canopus lies due south of Sirius, about 36 degrees. That's far enough south that it never appears above your horizon unless you're below the latitude. Okay, when you end, then you'll need a flat south horizon. Canopus crosses the south point on the horizon just 21 minutes after Sirius does. When to look, Canopus is due south. When Beta Canis Majoris, or also known as Mizum, Mirzum, the star with a few finger widths on the right side of Sirius at its highest point due to south, looks straight down from Mirzum. And then also, Jupiter's moon Eo crosses in front of Jupiter's face. Okay. And its tiny black spot that follows behind from the 702 to 917, Jupiter's great red spot transits the planet's central medium. Meridian, excuse me. And so if we look here, well, let's do the 27. We don't have a graphic for today, just that. So, all right. Moon phase 1%, just a slight little sliver. And then we'll be completely at the new moon. New phase, new beginning. Mine Oracle. Okay, today we've begun a new phase but we'll get there momentarily today we're at the fourth day fourth tone It's called the self-existing tone of form it's after the one has separated into the two and then the one and the two have gotten together to create and they create a third member and once they create that third member they now are in a point of they've learned how to manifest and create so it becomes self-existing able to manifest and create and live and adapt accordingly okay Today is about birth, birthing the energies within ourselves, and the guide today is synchronicity and navigation. So today would be the self-existing dragon guided by the earth. The phrase for today is I define in order to nurture measuring being. I seal the input of birth with the self-existing tone of form. I am guided by the power of navigation. See our moon phase is just about there, and if we go down and look where we're at, check this out. Remember I told you we were going to be heading into this middle column? Well, today's the day. 
Today is the day. So we've got the six here, reflecting the six here, and right in the middle, the central pillar. So in this place, this is the place that we really want to, uh, it's a good place to be. And if we really focus and use our meditations to be able to kind of put ourselves in that middle place and just watch everything revolving around us, we begin to see a bit more of the synchronicities that are going on. And that's what it's all about. The more we pay attention, the more we see the synchronicities and we realize that life has its way of unfolding. All we need to do is watch and pay attention to the way in which it is doing it. And over at Space Weather, our solar wind is currently at 388.5 kilometers per second. Planetary K index is between a 3 and a 6. You know, several hours back, it was both steady 6 and 6, so we were in a nice good storm. Things have subsided a little bit here. Corona holes, not much, but nonetheless, we're still feeling the effect of that solar wind perhaps coming this way. M-class flares 70, X-class 30, and geomagnetic storm activity looks about where it was the other day. So expect some more activity going on. Another possibility that we will have another flare, but that's about the extent of that. All right, there you have it. That gets us started so you know what energy you're dealing with as you go out in the world today. UFO News is up next. Stay tuned. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right, Dirk. Thank you very much. Let's check out, see what we have going on here. All right. Our first sighting takes us to Minden, Canada. Or Canada, if that's how you choose to pronounce it. Um, this interesting photo of an unknown light was taken over Minden in Ontario, Canada on the 22nd of October 2013. So we're going way back to check this out. Witness report six sets of lights above the horizon, no sound heard, landed directly towards my position, did not pass over to my knowledge and may maybe something or nothing. This picture was taken by my cell phone camera late afternoon. The view is looking east southeast from the back deck of the cottage the setting sun behind is behind me and was illuminating the sky and clouds which I thought would be a nice picture so there you go you know sometimes people have these sightings they don't report them right away and so that's why you know we see sightings that take us back to other months behind okay moving from here here is a uh, Family witnesses, Delta or Boomerang shaped UFO in California. Multiple witnesses in Fresno reported a black boomerang shaped UFO with red lights. Twice flew over the neighborhood under 150 feet at about 7.30 p.m. on the 24th of February, according to testimony from the MUFON database. The reporting witness was outside in his backyard when he looked to the northwest and saw three red moving lights in unison toward him accompanied by a low roaring sound. The way the lights appeared was a different configuration than I have seen on an airplane, the witness stated. He quickly moved inside to elude his girlfriend to come outside. The lights flew over my neighbor's house, two houses west of us, and as, I, and as it passed three streets south of us, a few more red lights suddenly turned on. We watched a row of red lights drift in a southwest direction for a couple of minutes before I couldn't see any more, yet I could still hear the roar. The size of the object was large. The lar lar light formation was half the width of the neighborhood block. The witness also alerted the mother to come outside and look at the object. Less than five minutes later, I walked back outside and heard the roaring sound again, louder. I think I looked up and flying directly over me, coming from the east, I clearly saw a dark V-shape with four red lights underneath each side of it forming a V. The same red lights I saw before. The object was low flying. There was a 50-foot palm trees in our front yard, and the object was at least 100 to 150 feet above the ground. It sharply turned south when it was two houses west of me and followed the same path I saw the first time. As it flew away, I, real, I noticed that the object appeared completely flat and nothing visible besides the red lights. 
The witness believes there were dozens of other people who may have seen the object. Across the street from me is Fresno High School and the outdoor lights that illuminate the track field were on since dozens of people are exercising out there. I was shocked that I clearly saw a dark V shape against the night sky and it moved quite slow. If I had a bike I could have kept up with its speed. I lost sight after a couple minutes. I even ran out into the front street with my mother to get a better look. It wasn't until then that I realized that the row of lights I saw fly away for the first time formed a V pattern too. I was stunned. By the time I realized I should chase after it in my car, it was gone. I was unable to get any pictures with my photo, with my phone. The witness did provide an illustration. Recent California coverage includes several cases. All right. So there we go. This is the drawing right there. All right. Moving on. Next one, we go to UFOs follow Alitalia jet before flying off information. Normally we don't like to publish obscure lights in the sky, but this video looks genuine and the objects appear to be flying information. Could they possibly be some type of probe? Ferigu Stefano, 44, is a channel on YouTube where he publishes his own UFO sightings. The last one took place last Friday when two discs of light escorted an Alitalia plane that had just taken off from Elmas, said journalist El Union Sade Ivan Morgana. An average, I sometimes see two to three times a month. Firegu clarifies, I'm not crazy, details of the new kiosk with El Union Sade today. All right, so there's our object right there. We see the two uh, right here and right here. Okay, we've certainly seen these type of small whitish orbs before. And again, there's what we're looking at. Okay, moving on to the next one. Retired commercial pilot saw UFOs land at Area 51. The executive director of MUFON, Jan Harzan, has started sending UFO alerts to his members. The first alert went out this week to say that it is startling it is starting an under to say it is startling is an understatement. Here is the exact content of the first offering. I received a call from a retired TWA pilot who urgently needed to speak with me. He had introduced himself as a commercial airline pilot with 48 years of flying experience who had two incredible sightings during his career as a pilot that he now felt com comfortable talking about since he was retired, but that was not what prompted him to call. It was a more intriguing story that I will share with you in just a minute. He started off by sharing a report of being at the co-pilot on a TWA flight from St. Louis to San Francisco. The flight had been delayed several hours due to mechanical problems, but finally got off the ground in the late evening heading west. As the flight approached the state of Nevada, air traffic control broke the silence stating that traffic was in the area and requested that they make an immediate 90-degree turn to the north and wait for further instructions. An odd request at nearly 1 a.m. at 36,000 feet. Usually little or no traffic existed at this hour of the morning, especially at this altitude. They immediately followed the instructions given by ATC. As they were heading north, he happened to look down and see what appeared to be an ILS turn on on the darkest surface below. For those who are not familiar with an ILS, it's an instrument landing system. This ILS was different, though. It was a three-dimensional hologram something I'd never seen before as an airplane pilot. It was also blue with violet light crossing at 90 degree angles. The next thing you noticed there was that in the upper right hand corner of their cockpit shield there appeared to be maybe 20 to 30 firefly type lights flitting around way up high in the sky. They then began making hard right angle turns and shot one after another down to the holographic ILS until one of every one of them was on the ground. Then the ILS turned off and it was pitched back again on the ground. He turned to the pilot and asked, Did you just see that? The pilot looked at him and answered, No, sir, we did not. ATC then came back on the radio and said that they were now clear of any traffic and gave them new course heading to San Francisco. The exact location of the holographic ILS opened up and the lights in the sky made hard right angle turns to land was Area 51, he told me. This was back in 1998 when he, 1988 when he had this sighting. 
All right, very interesting. You don't get many reports of people saying they saw those kind of landings over there. Okay, moving on. The hybrid program. This comes to us from UFO Digest. The UFO phenomenon has evolved over the decades from the 40s to the present. Each generation has witnessed aerial phenomena and has consequently had increasing access to clues and evidence. Civilizations from parallel realities to parallel dimensions similar to our own reality have been manipulating human DNA from the beginning of our recorded history and it is highly likely that all this activity over the decades is the visually elusive air traffic of beings involved in one singularly focused mission involving humans. This genetic program is a part of our human history. It is there with you and I now and will continue flowing down line into humanity's future. It is time to accept the fact that we are a hybrid, hybridized humanoid beings with alien DNA. However, the children of the very last human genetic upgrade are quite different and far more advanced than you and I and thus currently living off world out of harm's way. We have a number of reliable eyewitness reports of these hybrid children and in this website we will paint a few broad strokes in order to take a peek at the feverish activity occurring out of public sight along with the mind-bending possibilities of the impending first contact. Hybridization of conscious humanoid appears to be quite complex. Evolu evolution is not ruled out, but there is a point at which highly advanced humanoids began to upgrade other humanoids. The benefits of this process would, at its simplest, be the perpetuation of life, intelligence, and consciousness. This is a logical expectation with an infinite multiverse and likely a process that spans countless worlds and vast expanses of time as we know it. Earth is but a part of the process and not the process itself. We will come to realize that we are part of a larger galactic family and the relatives are coming to introduce themselves. The information illustrates and seen recreations contained in this website exist and can only be shared with the world thanks to the hard work of researchers, writers, and CE4 eyewitnesses. To our readers, we would like to state this information has been diligently collected and represents literally hundreds of hours of conversations with experts in the field as well as abductees who are willing to and kind enough to participate in the development of these renderings to assure as high a degree of accuracy as possible. As utterly bizarre and surreal as some of these renderings may appear to be, they are based upon the input directly from abductees and CE4 eyewitnesses. The Hybrid Project website begins with the fundamental concepts and logical speculation and we expect more revelations and evidence to flow toward us as time passes. Therefore, this site will evolve and we will update sections as we learn more. Please stay tuned. Alright, and one more piece here. It says, what will it take to convince others that UFOs are important? It's a good question. Many of us would like to know. UFO historian Richard Dolan has described the initial reaction of many people to his passionate interest in the subject. They express interest, might even describe something they saw on TV concerning the phenomenon, and then after a few minutes of his well-informed explanation, their eyes gloss over and are clearly bored. Yes, opinion polls indicate the public is interested in UFOs. Advertising executives have long known this, but the fascination is for the most part quite superficial. Why is this? I suspect partly because of the massive denial of authority figures that say there is nothing to it. All the, after all, the world is so complex we rely on authorities to put to use vast amounts of data to make what we hope are reasonable decisions. Most people have little understanding of the technological miracles that science has achieved, but they are grateful and trusted devices, like planes, autos, computers, to work reliably. Needing to trust leaders, I suspect, might be built into our, bi our biology. For a million years before civilization was established, hunter-gatherers worked in small groups to survive. Leadership was a question of life and death, and those clans that had the best leaders, the shaman and the shah woman, that knew best how to kill the animals or find the healing herbs and deliver the babies played a critical role in survival. So we the people have a strong tendency to be we the sheeple. For the UFO question to take on special importance in the popular imagination it will need to be transformed from an entertaining diversion to become a way of addressing the seemingly insurmountable problems our planet is facing. This is already being attempted by those within the UFO community that discuss the possibility of downloading into our technology, technological culture 
the secrets of the energy propulsion systems of flying saucers. So-called free energy in one fell sweep could eliminate poverty and pollution, thus possibly reversing global warming and ending world hunger. Of course, in order for the so-called ETs to give us such devices, they might understandably insist on a peaceful transformation of our planet to replace what ufologist Stanton Friedman has called our perpetual state of tribal warfare. This is going to be hard sell when the mass media and academia in service to their corporate masters repeatedly insist that there's nothing to it. For the control group's point of view, those clandestine forces determined to keep a lid on the UFO issue, an important strategy would be to recruit authority figures to block any significant discussion of flying saucers. Opinion makers who step out of line to find their access to funding cut off. This is all done behind the scenes and is quite effective in my opinion. Okay, you can see it goes on more and more to this article, a lot more to it. So I'm just going to leave this to you because it talks about something that we're pretty aware of. We're aware of the cover-ups. We're aware of how the disinformation campaign is going on out there so that people don't know what's going on. Hopefully in time this will change, perhaps when people actually see with their own two eyes, they'll actually start learning to trust them and uh, stop relying upon leaders who only show themselves out to be liars time in and out. All right, that is UFO News. Let me jump away for a moment. And I will be right back. Here we go. Another alien visitor claimed that his race had been looking in on us for centuries and that they had in fact influenced the course of human history in some rather critical and startling ways. Listen up. I am myself and I am someone else. All right, let's continue on. So this first story here affects everybody because it has to do with more spying, more spying upon us, the people who are using the internet, people who are using webcams. Optic nerve, millions of Yahoo webcam images are intercepted by the GCHQ. So over the week you've heard me tell a few stories about this. This continues on. It says 1.8 million users are targeted by UK agency in a six month period alone. Opnik nerve program called Yahoo Webcam Image collects UK, Yahoo Webcam images in bulk. Yahoo says a whole new level of violation of our users' privacy. The material include large quantity of sexually explicit images. Britain surveillance agency GCHQ, with aid from the U.S. National Security Agency, intercepted and stored the webcam images of millions of Internet users not suspected of wrongdoing, secret documents reveal. GCHQ files dating between 2008 and 2010 explicitly stated that the surveillance program codenamed Optic Nerve collected still images of Yahoo webcam chats in bulk and saved them to agency databases regardless of whether individual users were an intelligence target or not. In one six-month period in 2008 alone, the agency collected webcam imagery, including substantial quantities of sexually explicit communications, far more than 1.8 million Yahoo user accounts globally. Yahoo reacted furiously to the webcam interception and approached the Guardian. But when approached by the Guardian, the company denied any prior knowledge of the program, accusing the agencies of a whole new level of violation of our users' privacy. And goes on and says that uh, GCHQ does not have the technical means to make sure no images of the UK or US citizens are collected and stored to the system and there are no restrictions on the UK law to prevent American images from being accessed by British analysts without an individual warrant. The documents also chronicle GCHQ's sub sustained struggle to keep the large store sexually explicit imagery collected by optic nerve away from the eyes of its staff though there is little discussion about the privacy implications of storing the material in the first place. Optic Nerve, the documents provided by the NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, show 
began a prototype in 2008 and was still active in 2012, according to internal GCHQ wiki page access that year. All right, so more to this article. Just more spying, GCHQ and uh, NSA. So they're watching. They may, Hey, in case you're watching now, guys at GCHQ and NSA, how you doing? Good to see you. I hope you're enjoying the show. Um, please quit spying on people because we don't like it. You wouldn't like it if someone was spying on you. So please quit spying on us. That would be a really awesome thing. And if you don't stop spying on us, then we're going to have to assume that you're really not the good guys that are out to help us, that you're actually the bad guys, in which case you should be in jail. So moving on. Freedom of information. We now have a source to do it online. Freedom of information online. Freedom of Information Act gives you the right to request information from federal agencies. From FO Freedom of Information Online, you can submit freedom of information requests to all participating agencies, track the status request, search for requests submitted by others, access previously released records, and generate agency specific freedom of information process and reports. All right, so this link's available. Just in case you want to uh, look for anything, check anything out. Here's the place. And you can go here. You've got a search page, a search tab. You can just go in, put the criteria of what you're looking for. Select the agency you're wanting to search out and the different agencies you can look through. Department of Commerce, Customs and Border Protection, the EPA, Labor uh, Relations Authority, Merit Systems. Protection Board, National Archives and Records Administration, Pension Benefit Guarantee, and the Department of the Navy. So a lot of places you can check. And here we have another tab that takes us to other reports and requests. So could be a good site. I know a lot of folks are out there wanting to, to uh, petition information from the government. Well, there's a good way to do it. Now you can just do it right online. Now, you know the whole global warming thing we keep hearing about? You know, man caused the global warming. I mean, how silly is that? Anybody that is able to think that has two brain cells knows that man is not creating the global warming down here. It's only those individuals who are bent on corruption that will lie to the people and say, humankind is doing this. Despite the fact that this planet has been here for millions of years, I know some people think it's only been here 6,000, but we've been here millions of years. Despite that fact that has been going on and on, we still have those who say man is creating the problems on this planet and global warming is happening. Well, absolutely ludicrous. Ludicrous. Here's an article that says Greenpeace co-founder says there's no ev scientific evidence of man-made global warming. There's no scientific evidence that human activity is causing the planet to warm, according to Greenpeace co-founder Patrick Moore, who testified in front of a Senate committee on Tuesday. Moore argued that the current argument that the burning of fossil fuels is driving global warming over the past century lacks specific evidence. He added that the Earth is an unusually cold period and some warming would be a good thing. There is no scientific proof that human emissions of carbon dioxide are the dominant causes of the minor warming that the Earth's atmosphere over the past hundred years. Today we live in an unusually cold period in the history of life on Earth, and there is no reason to believe that a warmer climate would be anything but beneficial for humans and the majority of other species. It is important to recognize that the face of dire predictions that about 2 degrees Celsius rise in global average temperature that humans are a tropical species. Moore said, we evolved at the equator in a climate where the freezing weather did not exist. The only re reasons we can survive these cold climates are fire, clothing, and housing. It could be said that frost and ice are the enemies of life, except for those relatively few species that have evolved to adapt to the freezing temperatures during the Pleistocene Ice Age, he added. It is extremely likely that the warmer temperature than today's would be far better than a cooler one. Indeed, cold weather is more likely to cause death than warmer weather. Real Clear Science reported that from 1999 to 2010, a total of 4,563 individuals died from heat. 
But during that same period, 7,778 individuals died from the cold. Only in 2006 did heat-related deaths outnumber cold deaths. So, very interesting to see. But again, we've heard this. And it seems that if the argument here, if they're saying that they're, they're claiming in their argument that fossil fuels is causing the problem, yet we have alternative sources of energies that are available that we should be exploring, or we should be exploring the extraterrestrial technologies. But who's in charge of the fossil fuels? Is that you? Is that me? No. It's the corporations that are doing the fossil fuels. Therefore, for them to point their fingers and say the average person on the street, the non-corporate Americans that are not involved are causing this is absolutely ludicrous. Because if the companies, the oil companies, weren't making this product to begin with, we wouldn't be putting this out. So, again, they're just trying to divert the attention away from them to somewhere else. That's the tactic that they use. It's an old tactic that when someone wants to go and figure out you did something wrong you blame somebody else and it seems to work it seems to work quite well because people buy into the lies all the time now here we have a story that says AIDS cured it says Egypt's military this is good news if this is true as it moves to consolidate power army claims to have developed a device that truly defeat, defeats deadly virus with no side effects more than 36 million people have died from AIDS virus across the globe while another 35.3 million are currently living with the disease but they are no longer have any reason to worry the Egyptian army has defeated the disease and hepatitis C or so claimed Egyptian general doctor Ibrahim Abdel Ati chief of the medical branch said we defeated AIDS and rest assured we defeated AIDS Abel Atiti said Sunday at the press conference, and indeed, he said according to a translation provided by the Egyptian protest groups, we are all, Khaled said, I conquered AIDS with the blessings of my Lord, glory to him, with a rate of 100%. The country's military leader, General Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, and President Abde Mansour were present at the conference according to an official statement. He said that he had pioneered a method which could extract the disease and break it into amino acids so the virus becomes nutrition for the body instead of disease. This is a miracle in scientific research. I take AIDS from the patient and feed it. Feed the patient on AIDS. I give it to him on a kebab skewer to feed on. And he said, presumably, metaphorically, I take the disease and I give it to him as food and this is the top of the scientific miracles well that's pretty awesome that's pretty awesome and if indeed this is right on this is an amazing breakthrough now we know where AIDS came from right there was no guy that went into Africa and banged a monkey that's the cover story and AIDS was created in a lab the story says that Congress put up 10 million dollars in the 70s and that this was an approved project that was part of a, a, a naval project and that they loose this product into the world as a test market and they loosed it into the communities because at that time what they said according to their documents that they were wanting to get rid of the undesirables so they loosed it into the community the gay communities the black communities and these are the communities that we find that are having these most the, the biggest problems with these this disease well, all we have to do is go back and just read the conspiracy theories and the stories to see where AIDS came from. It wasn't coming from Africa. It's not coming from a man and a monkey. It was man-made created. So if another government outside of America is able to discover this, this could be a good thing for the whole world. A good thing for the whole world. So let's just hope that that works the way that it's supposed to work. All right, this is, uh, we're going to switch gears here now. Noah's Ark finally on the way to America. There's the picture of the uh, of an ark. A life-size replica of Noah's Ark, the biblical vessel on which God saved people and animals when the earth was flooded as punishment for mankind's sins is coming to the US 
and is expected to draw more than a million Americans every year. The story of Noah is coming to the big screen too. Hollywood used models, sets, stages, and other trucks, tricks of the movie trade to create those stunning images. But what's being planned by Answers in Genesis Ministry Chief Ken Ham will not be a model, a set, or a stage. It will not be a trick produced by a camera. It will be a life-size version of Noah's Ark at 510 feet long, 85 feet wide, and three stories high. It will be used as an evangelism tool in his outreach to unbelievers. He announced Thursday that funding for the first phase has been put in place and groundbreaking for the projects expected in only weeks, sometime in May. The Ark Encounter will be built on 800 acres adjacent to Interstate 75 at Williamstown, Kentucky, bringing hundreds of jobs to the community. The first phase will cost an estimated $73 million. The initial cost, including building permits and licenses, property preparation, architectural plans, and exhibit designs already have been paid through the state of membership to the exhibits as well as donations prior to a bond offering that put in place the rest of the funding for the outreach. The ministry has raised and continue to raise funds for the project. It is also being financed through the bonded program which Ham told WND had faced obstacles from atheists and other opponents of his message. The first phase includes parking lots with a tram that will carry visitors through a valley to the entrance. There is a pathway that will allow visitors to begin their trip back in time to what the ark would have looked like, now the animals would have been protected, how Noah and his family would have lived, and more. It will be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, attraction built by a Christian ministry to draw the attention of people to whom it wishes to share its message, essentially that being man was separated from God and His holiness, and Jesus came to earth as both God and man to open a door for humankind to return to Him. Ham's Creation Museum, only a short drive from the site of the Ark Encounter, has about two million visitors in its first six years of existence. The professional studies estimated that the Ark Encounter will draw, in worst-case scenario, some 1.2 million people per year. The estimates actually ranged up to two million visitors per year. It's not meant only to be as a tourist attraction or job generator, although it undoubtedly will play those roles, he said. Answers in Gen Genesis is a ministry. We make no apology about the fact that we proclaim the authority of the Word of God. Outside the cross of Calvary, he said, I believe the Ark of Noah is the greatest reminder of the message of the salvation of God. Noah and his family had to go through a doorway to be saved. We now need to only go through a doorway to be saved. Jesus said, I am the doorway. We praise our Creator God for His blessings and all the, this incredible project we just witnessed from our generous supporters around the country, Ham said of the project. All right, we got more to this, and you can see there's Russell Crowe who's playing in the upcoming movie. So a lot more to the article, so check it out. It's very interesting. Very interesting, you know. We'll have to check that out when it gets built, right? All right, now let's go up to here. And what we have is an article. This is from In5D. It says it's okay to not fit in with society. This is from Greg Prescott. Do you feel like you sometimes don't fit in with society? Have you ever caught yourself up looking at the unhealthy food in someone else's shopping cart at the grocery store? When you see people blindly following others, does it make you feel a little uncomfortable? Are you more likely to follow your own path instead of what everyone else is doing? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you're not alone. People who tend who strive to fit in and conform to society are some of the most subservient and controlled people you'll ever meet. They tend to follow the flock and are highly influenced by other people's opinions versus formulating their own regardless of what other people think. They seem to be more concerned about what other people think about them than what they feel to themselves. For the conformist, the only critical thinking needed involves how other people may view their perceptions. We realize that most of everything we have been taught in history is either a lie or some form of propaganda. Much of our true history and the origins have been hidden from us, despite concrete evidence showing that mankind has been on earth for hundreds of thousands of years. This is part of the brainwashing we receive through the indoctrination system, commonly referred to as the public education system. If you question any official story taught to you in school, then you're looked down upon because you are not conforming to government learning expectations through state-sponsored propaganda. 
As students, we tend not to question authority and willingly accept our teachers' lessons as the truth. Our minds become conditioned to regurgitate these lessons in order to graduate each year. In an experiment in conformity, most people will conform to group expectations even when they know the group is wrong. In psychology, this is known as the Ash Conformity Experiments. When we attend school, not only are the students conforming to the teacher's expectations, but the teachers are also conforming to the teaching of propaganda and the agendas of little liberty to stray from the state-sponsored textbooks. The medical industry is no different. For example, according to Dr. Leonard Caldwell, there are over 300 cures for cancer, but most doctors are required by law to use surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy before any holistic measures such as the Rife machine, THC oil, or etc. Because the physicians are not learning holistic medicine in college, they are trained to use archaic methods in conjunction with Big Pharma, which has not cured anything since polio. And of course, the media complicity in all of this. The media boils down to talking heads reading propaganda scripts with relatively no positive news items. Yet those who fit in well watch the nightly news on a daily basis, followed by their favorite TV programming, which takes them either further away from finding themselves through reality TV shows and commercials, people are being told what to think, how to act, what to drink, listen, and buy. TV is responsible for conditioning the mind to think in ways that are not obvious as well. For example, a typical commercial will not tell you to try to sell a product, but an image and a social expectation as well. Okay, and why do people, uh, why people belittle those who don't follow the flock? Well, in psychological, in psychology, people often mirror that which they fear within themselves. For example, if someone says they hate another person, it actually means something within them that the name caller hates within his or herself. Dr. Spock once said something about the lines of lines of in an insane society, the insane appear to be sane. To those who are awakened, does this statement sound like truth to you? Nonconformists are more likely to use critical thinking and research topics to find suitable answers versus assuming that our governmental agencies will always look after us and will never allow us to ingest harmful ingredients such as aspartame and fluorides. Those who don't conform are more likely to look within for answers because the external answers are fabrications, lies, or are unacceptable. If you feel like you don't fit in with most of society and your actions are respectful, responsible, and love-based, then chances are you're on the right path. Okay? So, we see this condition a lot, don't we? This condition of conformity. Conformity, we have it in all walks of life right now. You know, I've had some conversations with a friend who tells me that when I talk about like police officers, how I, how I should not try to lump them all and say all police officers are bad because I use blanket terms or all government officials are bad. And, and I understand his point. Because you don't want to lump everybody in, but i got to add this to the mix. I know that there's good officers out there, just like there's good politicians out there, just like there's good people in banking out there. However, when these good people say and do nothing about the bad ones that are in their departments, when bad police officers do things and good police officers say nothing, or... Bad politicians are doing things and good politicians do nothing or bad bankers are ripping people off and good people say and do nothing. Guess what? Now, how do you consider those to be good officers or good politicians or good bankers? Because all they are doing is conforming with the problems, conforming to the corruption instead of standing up to it. So, whereas I see it's important to not classify and group everybody together in one category, it's kind of hard not to unless the good guys start turning into bad guys. Because if they don't do that, then are they really the good guys? Are they? Is a good police officer really a good police officer if he allows the other guys to do bad things and beat on people? Not really. He's a coward. And he's just as bad as the other ones because he's standing and watching. Is a good politician, you know, someone who who we should trust if he stands by and allows bad policies and, and corruption to go on? It's hard to say that he is because it seems like he's only going along. Bad things happen when good people say and do nothing. And a lot of good people are unfortunately conforming with the bad people rather than standing their own ground. Now the good thing is that those who are conforming, 
they all fit into the different categories of government, police, military, bankers, certain sections of society. But for the biggest cross-section of society, the billions of others, there's many that aren't conforming, that aren't lying, that aren't caught up in all that nonsense. We need to stand up and we need to come together to really understand that we can make a change. Buddha, Jesus, all the other masters talked about the power that we have with our minds to be able to affect a change in this world. Imagine if billions of us around the world thought about good things happening, thought about positivity. Imagine what that would do. You've heard the story of the hundred monkey syndrome. You had the monkeys on the one island and they would wash their potatoes and somehow or another that consciousness went over to the other island where the other monkeys started doing it. That's what the hundred. Imagine when you got billions, what we could do. So we have to not conform. We have to become individuals. We have to learn to stand on our own two feet, think for ourselves, and we have to be brave enough to turn in those that are causing problems in the world. It's the only way that we're going to get into a place of goodness. Turn in the bad guys, and the good people can then be free. That's what needs to happen, in my opinion. And I believe that there's a lot of others who think exactly that same way. Now, I'm going to show you some movies and with the weekend coming up, lots of things you can pay attention to. Got a new movie coming out here. I wanted to bring this website to you. This movie, Son of God. There's a lot of challenges going in the world, but obviously this movie to me tells me that people are craving and understand intuitively that there's something that we need to, that is missing from our life. Here's a movie. It's about Jesus, Jesus Christ. So if you get a chance, this movie starts this weekend. Check it out. This website you can go and you can find all about it. All about the movie. Okay. That was the larger life story of the New Testament. Gets a larger than life treatment in the standalone feature Son of God. Told with the scope of scale of an epic. This feature film features powerful exotic locals, dazzling effects, and a rich orchestral performance from Oscar winning Hans Zimmer. All right, so check that out. Now, another movie you might want to check out. Got a long weekend, and if you're here in California where it's raining and you're going to probably be in some place where you're going to keep dry, you'll have plenty of time to watch movies. Here's one. It's from 1943. It's an old French Freemason movie. Okay, French movie from 1943 called Occult Forces. Got subtitles, but hey, might be something interesting, so check it out. The movie's 51 minutes long, just 52. All right, and also, here's a link to 100 plus free documentaries that will expand your consciousness. So, going on this list here, check this out. Look at this we got movies, 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 lots of movies here. And you just go down the list, pick them out, and these are. Movies that will make you think. Some of them you may have seen. Some of them you may have heard of. Some of them you've never heard of. But here you go. Watch them. Check them out. Learn from them. Share them with others. Lots of great things there. Okay. We actually have 186. So it's a lot more than just 100. A lot more than just 100. So check it out. I'm going to check them out and uh, should keep us busy for quite some time. All right. Um, today is a, you know, on the Mayan Oracle, I told you it was a dragon day, right? It's a four dragon. Well, I always like how things, and it's a dragon guided by the earth, which is synchronicity. I always am amazed at the way synchronicity works because when I went today to find a channeled message, this channeled message comes from the Dragon Realms. Dragon Realms message to humanity. I didn't plan this, but here it is. My Oracle says it's a Dragon Day and there happens to be a message here along that line. So I think there's some synchronicity here to pay attention to. Let's check this out. See what this is all about. There we go. I have to fix something real quick. And off.
Dragon Realm's message to humanity. February 27, 2014, by Karen Dunan. Greetings we are the Dragon Realms and we come to guide and to support as the energetic frequency of planet Earth now begins to shift, to expand, and to deepen. This will affect all upon and within planet Earth and will begin to directly affect the human race in various ways. You in human form have been taught what life on this planet should resemble, you have been taught the human way to live and to be and we are here to support you as you now move out of this containment and take your place among all sentient beings in truth in the universe of three. The ability that the human vehicle has to interpret the frequencies that now flood across and within the planet Earth is increasing and expanding and deepening. The way in which these frequencies are interpreted is now changing and shifting as you now come into balance at a very human level and we are here to guide on the human level of this interpretation for the old 3D Earth created reality will try to place focus on the spiritual aspect. This takes you out of the moment and takes you out of the human experience throwing you out of balance and this is deliberate. For not focusing on this human aspect of the interpretation of the frequencies will begin to trigger the human logical mind which will then try to teach you to fear this process. The process the human race now begin to enter into is a natural state of being, however as you have had no guidance in this natural flow of energy then the human logical mind will begin to interpret it based on the reference points that you have been given already. We come to guide strongly that you have no reference point in truth for your reference points have been created for you in order to further contain and suppress you. It is a natural state of being to be in the heart space, it is a natural state of being to feel the connection to all around you both off planet and on planet but this has been taught as something that is unnatural and something that few can align with. This is taught to confuse and to interrupt the natural flow of energy through, around, and within the human vehicle. We wish to guide you in relation to the extreme heightened energetic frequencies that are now flowing around, through, and within the human race, allowing for miracles that are taught cannot happen to unfold in the personal lives of individual humans upon and within planet Earth. For many of you are now experiencing said miracles and yet still your human logical mind states this cannot happen. We guide for all to allow the flow of energies and to detach from the human logical mind and its need to teach you that something is or is not possible. You live in a universe of infinite possibilities and all are here to support you as you now experience this from within your human form, for all are not human, the human vehicle the vehicle that is supported upon the planet Earth under the old 3D Earth created reality. This will now change and shift and widen and expand for planet Earth is now preparing to support more than human life and this will be shown in truth to those who have come here to help birth this reality upon and within planet Earth. We ask for you to allow the expansion and to let go the boundaries as they are illuminated from within, for all that prevents you from the full experience within your human form are the vibrational boundaries that you have been taught to anchor within the old 3D Earth created reality. To our children who walk the planet we send you much love and we guide for you to prepare for all is now and all will now begin to expand and to deepen beyond that which has been taught as the human life experience here upon planet Earth. 33311 Four four two two seven seven four 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 nine nine one 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 zero 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 one 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 six six five five seven 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 two 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 eight 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 two two eight eight six six seven seven three 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 eleven 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 zero 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 We are the Dragon Realms and we walk with you at all moments of all moments. Do not allow the human logical mind to try to teach you to cling on tightly to the reality that you have been taught over and over within the old 3D Earth created reality is the only reality, this is not truth and is not supported at this time and is not supported in the new Earth. All justice and you are in truth. Alright, a couple things that I noticed during the course of it, they talked about focus, which, like the magician, about focus. And they also talked about expansion. Here we have Jupiter tonight, planet of expansion. So I think when, if we pay attention, we see lots of synchronicities around us. And the messages come in all different places. And all we have to do is just listen. Listen for the clues to know that we're being guided along to the right place. So over the course of this week, the number of things that I talked about and and stories had to do with past lives, Dolores Cannon, 
So this affirmation for today is a healing and releasing the past affirmation. Today's affirmation has to do with healing your past and moving forward. The only reason people don't always realize their full potential is because they are trapped in the past and are afraid of letting go. Unfortunately, it's quite difficult to live in the present when your mind is constantly traveling backwards. So let's go ahead and close your eyes. Let's take a deep breath. And exhale. Take another deep breath. Exhale again. And just allow the words of this affirmation to reverberate through your consciousness. I am at peace with my past. I choose to release the past now. I move forward by letting go of the past. I choose to forgive myself and others. I am grateful and happy to experience new joys in life. And just let those words reverberate and one more time. I am at peace with my past. I choose to release the past now. I move forward by letting go of the past. I choose to forgive myself and others. I am grateful and happy to experience new joys in life. Take another deep breath and exhale and imagine yourself experiencing new experiences. Imagine yourself walking along a path and as you walk along this path you realize you've gone a great distance and you think about all that you've been through and you think about where you're going and you look forward and you see up ahead your destination and you look behind and you see a great distance has been traveled and as you look behind you realize that the journey you need to travel is forward and so you thank the past energies you thank the lessons you experienced on your journey up to this point and you continue moving forward closer to your destination grateful that the past has brought you to where you are and has taught you the lessons you need so that you can move forward and imagine yourself now moving forward to that destination and see that as a finish line and you're finishing the line crossing the finish line and there you find a place to rest food to eat something to drink a place to rejuvenate yourself and once you do you realize that the journey of life continues on and you keep moving forward again thankful for the past that you experienced because it is moving you on and as you walk forward you activate all of your chakras make sure they're all efficiently working from the bottom of the spine up red orange at the belly button yellow just below the rib cage green at the heart blue at the throat indigo at the third eye and violet at the crown chakra and then the light continues on into the cosmos imagine this light flowing back and forth clockwise and counterclockwise at the same time as it weaves its way through your chakras imagine the cleansing energy going through each one cleansing out all of the poisons and toxins and doubts and fears that may have been picked up inadvertently along your way let the light cleanse them out and imagine your being filled with light imagine your being filled with love and as your being fills with love just feel this loving energy moving through each one of your cells each one of your DNA and releasing you from whatever bondages have been stored or manipulated and feel all those energies dissipate from your body and feel the freedom the strength the confidence when all of that is gone and now as we move forth into the weekend let's just imagine love and let's just imagine sending love all around the planet to each and every individual imagining that everyone has an awesome weekend a time to rejuvenate to collect one thoughts 
and to learn even more how to stand on our own. Let's just think of love and imagine ourselves throwing love into the world and let your subconscious mind continue on that journey of throwing love out into the world and let's bring our conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath. Exhale and open your eyes. That's it, my friends. That's our show for the week. Thank you very much for being here. I hope you enjoy the meditations and the affirmations. One thing I'd like to do is, is start including more affirmations that perhaps you might have in mind. So if you have a particular affirmation, favorite one, something you'd like to share, send me an email, firstcontactradio at yahoo.com, and I'll start including these affirmations in, part of, in our meditations. We're all in this together, my friends. So the more we work together, the more we help each other out, the better we're going to be. And we'll just keep spreading this vibe all around. That's it. Have an awesome weekend. Be safe. I'll talk to you soon. Love you. Peace. I'm out of here. <laughs>